we've saved this last question specifically because we both wanted to ask uh, we both wanted to talk about it you mentioned it before we started and it's from the brain buster memories of hot stuff eddie gilbert well in one of, one of those books that you showed earlier there's a story about eddie gilbert and for the people who are not familiar with Eddie Gilbert, I think it's in the first one, I think. Mm -hmm. That would be the I world according in, to Dutch. Yep. I think it's in there. And there was a lot of controversy about Eddie Gray. I mean, not Eddie Graham. I mean, Eddie Gil uh, Gilbert and what killed him. So I write a story about Eddie and I kind of tell his lie. And I, I loved Eddie because he loved the wrestling business more than anything else in the world because his father was a wrestler tommy gilbert and this is in memphis uh, and his brother was a wrestler doug gilbert and he really liked the business and I, in, in, and in the story eddie he told me that even when he was like eight or nine years old he would write imaginary cards and he would book it then he would write the next card he was a booker before he even knew what a booker was but he would write all this stuff down and he put it in a book and, and I never saw the books, but I'm sure the family has them somewhere. So I brought him to Puerto Rico and uh, kept him down there about six months. And Eddie, sometimes I, I used to think he had a little bit of a, what do you call bi bipolar bipolar polarity. I was thinking that name. But one day he would just be up and happy and laughing. And the next day he was so depressed. You think he was going to kill himself. Next day he'd be up and the next day he'd be, he'd be down again. Now this time you want to kill yourself because I'm watching him. But, and I don't know if that was the case, but he was, he was, he was very emotional sometimes. And, he wasn't really drinking, but he was taking some, some medication. And I think that's what they, he died of a heart attack in Puerto Rico. They, that's what the autopsy said. And a lot of people thought it was drugs that killed him an overdose, but I don't think that's what killed him. I think what killed him is, is the wrestling business because he had left. He was living with Kane and Kane come to my door one day knocked open the door. It was, it was Glenn Kane. I said, what's up? He said, Eddie left. And I went, well, he didn't tell me. He said, I know. He says, well, come on in. But he said the room was going to be too expensive for him all by himself. Cause he was splitting the room. I said, well, I got a back bedroom. You can go you can crash here. So he went and he went to, we saw him at Cornette a little bit earlier. He went up to Jim Cornette's uh, Smoky Mountain Wrestling and stayed there about not long, maybe three weeks. And then I was leaving Puerto Rico and going to WWF first time. And Carlos asked me who did I think could take the booker. And he said, what about Eddie? I said, he'd be a good choice. And I left and three weeks later, Eddie dies. So... I'm I'm still out on on the on the jury about what killed him, but I think he worried about the wrestling business too much, and saw his career. He wanted to be in WWE or WWF. He wanted to be in WCW, but he wasn't. He was in Puerto Rico, which I guess he thought he was a he was a failure. But I don't. He he was worried about a lot of things. With um, his run in the NWA, he seems to have a couple of stints there. He was in the WWF. When he was a kid, like in 83, 84, that, that's when he had the uh, car crash. Yeah, he had a bad it? accident there and crushed his, crushed his heart or something. He almost died. Hmm. Uh, well, I suppose you really answered the question then, but it was uh, the last few weeks. I thought you were booking Puerto Rico, but you would have actually been in the WWF at that time, wouldn't you? In early No, I was, I was finishing up in Puerto Rico. And I had about, I don't know, three weeks left, maybe. And we'd already set Eddie up to come in and take over my job, the, the, the booker's job. And I was leaving and I was leaving from there and 
I'm going to WWF. I was going to start working there. And then I was at home. And then somebody, I don't know if we had text messaging back in that day. Somebody called me and said, Eddie, they, they found him. They found him dead in Puerto Rico. And it, that, that, that shocked me. That stunned me really. Cause I liked, I liked Eddie a lot. How talented he was, was one he? of the, Oh, very talented. He was actually a very talented booker. He was, but he wasn't the, he, he actually came along at, at the time he, he was caught between cycles. He wasn't overly big. So he missed the WWF big guy. And then by the time that little guys come back alone, you know, he was gone because he was like one of the, he was, he was like a cruiserweight, but, but still he, he had the brain for it because he had studied old time wrestling and understood how it worked and understood how people thought he was actually very talented in that. Mm. I'm trying to think of anybody, maybe apart from Kenny Boland, who would have been a bigger fan than Jerry uh, of Jerry Lawler, because I know he carried the crown for years as well. Well, he was a fan of Lawler's, and he was a fan of Terry Funk. I'm, I'd be watching matches, and all of a sudden, he'd be he'd be Jerry Lawler acting just like him. The next night, he'd be Terry Funk. He would float in and out and back and forth. Sometimes I saw him, I think, float from Lawler to Funk in the same match, but you had to know what you were watching. So, but yeah, he, he did, he did love those guys and he wanted to actually be the King of Memphis. That was one of the childhood dreams. He, he told me, you know, a lot of nights in Puerto Rico, I didn't, I didn't drink. So we just sit out and watch, watch the beach. And he told me, he said, Oh yeah, I'm going to, I want to actually be the King of Memphis. I said, well, good luck. I know you ain't going to be that. You may be it for two weeks, but that's about it. Was, um, was Eddie, this is just off the top of my head, and then we will shut down the podcast, is, was it Eddie who ran over Jerry Lawler uh, all those years ago? Was he yes. involved in that? What was the stunt there? No, he was, they had this feud going, and I think they called Lawler outside. Doug and Eddie called him outside. And somebody come and got Lawler. I think it was Eddie Marlin, which was Jerry Jarrett's father-in-law. And you could just walk out the side door of the parking lot right there. And the camera went out, and they were shooting down. And you could see him getting in the car. And Lawler said, come on up here. Get him up here. And here he come. And didn't have to go maybe 100 feet, maybe. But this, the car had some speed on it. And Eddie Marlin was not the fastest individual in the world, but he got out of the way. But Lawler didn't, and the car hit him, and he took a bump on the pavement. It looked like a hell of a bump. The police actually came out on that. <laughs> Again, they came out, and they said they saw it on TV, and what's going on? And I guess Lawler had to smarten them up, said, oh, we just did it for TV. But it looked like a... It looked like a uh, legitimate uh, hit, hit and run. That's what it looked like. One and you the... can still see you. Can, and the beauty about YouTube is, you can still see it on YouTube. It's not like somebody is just talking about it. You can see it. You can see it today, right after the podcast ends. Look it up. 